Johan, we always assume that a patient is enrolled in a study once, but there are some cases where it's not the, ca not the case. So we heard horrible stories about some professional patients, mm -hmm. about also patients who are, who are enrolled several times. Can you tell about more about this experience? Mm -hmm. Let's not uh, you know, focus on those extreme cases, uh, professional patients. I have seen those 25 or 30 years ago where patients got enrolled into a trial and on their concomitant medications you could see that they were at the same time uh, enrolled in three other trials. That, in my opinion, doesn't happen uh, today anymore. However, what, what can easily happen, and it does happen, I'm 100% sure, is that patients are being enrolled more than once into a trial. How, how can that happen? Uh, the protocol states, by the way, that this is not supposed to happen. Uh, but, you know, protocols are rather lengthy and uh, sites do not necessarily read uh, every, every paragraph. So what, what can happen and what I, what I saw happening is a patient got enrolled into a trial, got randomized to drug A or drug B, underwent, for instance, uh, hip surgery on the left-hand side, the hip was replaced, the patient recovered from that surgery, the patient went home, and six months later, and the study was still ongoing, uh, the patient came back to the clinic because the other hip needed to be replaced. And the sites did not think about, you know, that this patient had already been enrolled once into this particular study and enrolled the patient a second time. Now, this is, this is not so easy to detect because the patient identifiers are not available to the sponsor company. In the past, we collected, for instance, date of birth. Then you could just run an analysis on date of birth, but you cannot do that anymore. You do not have initials anymore. Um, so identifying those cases is not that easy. And nevertheless, it is not supposed to happen.